Welcome to the Develop Yourself Podcast, where we teach you everything you need to land your first job as a software developer by learning to develop yourself, your skills, your network, and more. I'm Brian, your guest host. I know about two things pretty well. One, coding. Two, getting in shape. And I usually only talk about number one because that's what I feel most comfortable doing. And that's like the way I get paid and what I do for a living. So I'm pretty comfortable talking about code and stuff like that. It's kind of a dry topic, right? I've shared a lot of advice on number one, and I feel kind of guilty because I know that my secret to success as a developer has actually been something that I don't really ever talk about. It's been my exercise and diet routine. And you may be thinking, what the hell does that got to do with coding? What is this? Are you trying to sell a fitness program? I don't know, but watch and find out. Anyway, shame on me for not telling you about this early. Don't worry, this is not going to become some sort of fitness influencer type of podcast or whatever, and I'll keep going back to more coding-related topics. But I think there's a lot of value in this thing. So we all want to get in shape. I mean, most people do. There's tons of videos out there on it. People are always getting into dieting. I know that winter is upon us, the new year is upon us, and everybody's looking to get in shape. Maybe they want to lose weight for the summer. Maybe they want to spite their ex. Maybe they just want to go shirtless and take a pic and be a douche on Instagram. Whatever. No judgment, right? I got you. Exercise will make you a better coder. I stand by that. This made me a better coder. There's some science to that as well. Uh, you're probably a nerd if you're listening to this, or maybe you want to be a nerd. And maybe you want to know the scientific benefit of working out. And let me just read this verbatim. Regular physical activity improves blood flow to the brain, helps stimulate chemical changes in the brain that enhance learning, mood, and thinking. These chemical changes involve the production of more brain-derived neurotrophic factors, which involved in brain cell growth and learning. The result is improved concentration, memory, mental sharpness, which can all contribute to better coding skills. Great. Anyway, who doesn't want more brain power? And who doesn't want to just look better, right? Uh, you didn't need to know this to understand the power of exercise. I mean, Honestly, if you've ever gone running or lifted a heavy weight or done anything that's physically exerting, you know the mental clarity that can come as a result of that. All the science behind it is great to understand that there's actually like some reason behind that, but it, everybody just knows that intuitively, right? You go working out, you go exercise, you have good ideas. Every single time I've ever had a good idea, basically debugged something, thought of a business idea, thought of ideas for the podcast, newsletter, LinkedIn, whatever, it's all come from running on a treadmill walking around, lifting a heavy weight, doing something physically active. 10 years ago, I was in a much different space. I was 50 pounds heavier. I was also living a life that can be described as criminal. Think of like a low budget music video for a rapper. That was kind of like how my life looked. So I got sober, I learned to code, and now I'm an engineering manager. Just like that. Super easy, right? Not so much, as a matter of fact. I had the discipline when I got sober, of like a big grown baby. I hadn't had a job in years. I was smoking. I ate Jack in the Box every day. I remember my, my son at the time, we used to go to Jack in the Box every morning. Really embarrassing, actually. Kind of ashamed of that. Probably even more than the drinking and all the other stupid stuff I did. Going to Jack in the Box is a big mistake. <laughs> no disrespect to Jack in the Box. Just eating there every day was probably a terrible idea. So once I quit my vices, after an intervention, I had time on my hands. I thought, what am I going to do? I started working out along with coding the path of time. I got a small high from that running. And I was like, ooh, I like this. So my fitness journey really started as a replacement for the high I got from other things. It was only after a few years of keeping this up that I noticed just how deeply connected and intertwined it was to my success as a software developer. And I firmly believe that. Like it's been the core, the foundation, I believe, to my success as a software developer has been working out super hard. I would think of my best ideas. Coding is a stressful job, no matter what people tell you or what they see on TikTok. My routine always decreased my tension headaches that I'd get from looking at my screen all day. It kept me like enthused enough to go back to work. I'd go to work, I'd go work out at lunch sometimes and come back with great ideas. And I understood the power of delayed gratification. This one is the most important piece. It takes consistency over months, maybe even a year, to see results in the gym just like it takes time to see progress as a developer. You'll write code every day and feel like you're not making a lot of progress. You'll go to work out every day and you'll go back and look in the mirror. You will look the same. You keep doing that. Eventually, your body will change. It will conform and, and be molded by that consistency. It's like chipping away at stone, right? I see working out as like my superpower. I've been a little reluctant to share it with you. I was worried maybe you wouldn't get it. Maybe you don't care. 
Maybe you still won't get it or care. But I feel like this is so important that I'd feel ashamed and just like a jerk if I didn't share it with you, right? So now I think I've sold you on the benefits of working out. How do you actually do it? Let's get really practical with how you're going to get in shape. First thing is you need to get your diet in check. I paid a personal trainer a few years ago, thousands of dollars, and I read like three books on diet and exercise. And I'm going to give you the knowledge I got for free. Measure what you eat, get enough protein, and be in a caloric deficit. Groundbreaking stuff, I know. If losing weight was that simple, then everybody would have like a big, shiny, glistening six-pack, and they don't. Here's the issue, though. Most people don't weigh out their food or track their calories. Instead, they just kind of rely on stupid diets that force them not to eat things like carbs, or they only eat during like a small window of the day, and they think that this magically will work. They may even experience some results from this and then realize like that's not possible. Like Who doesn't want to eat bread, and who only wants to eat like in four hours? I like to eat all freaking day long. I do not want to ever be like on some super strict thing where I can't eat bread and then only eat like chicken in between 12 p.m. and like 4 p.m. Now, screw all that. So... It's about calories in and calories out. Don't overcomplicate it. Calculate your totally daily energy expenditure using a free calculator online. This is like a completely arbitrary, kind of guessy way of doing things. It's an estimate at best. It's okay. It's where you get started at, right? So here's some quick weight math for you because you are probably a nerd that loves math like I do. There are 3,500 calories in a pound of fat. So if you eat 3,500 calories less a week than you currently do, you're going to lose weight. That's about 500 calories per day. Now, that's aggressive. And if you're already small or you don't eat a lot or maybe you're a woman, that could be way out of your range. So maybe going towards like a 250 calorie deficit. And you probably don't even know where you're at right now. Your total daily energy expenditure varies person to person, your genetics, your workout routines, your habits, do you fidget a lot when you're at work? Do you just sit down and like go comatose all day? These all factor into how you're going to lose weight. So what you need to first do, start doing is just start looking at what you do eat, get a base for like how many calories a day am I eating? Okay, am I losing or gaining weight or am I staying the same? If you're staying the same, that is your baseline. Then you need to drop it. And understanding that math will help you know how much to drop it and get like a repeatable process for how much weight you want to lose. So I worked out for like five years straight before I saw a six pack and that was really frustrating. So what changed? I weighed my food and I tracked my calories. I still eat cake, bread, tacos, peeps. I love peeps. Can't help it. Don't judge me. And I just make sure that I'm hitting my daily calorie budget. I weigh out my food like a madman. It's not that hard. It's really not. I got a cheap little scale. I weigh food out on it and it's helped me tremendously. Here's what my typical day looks like. I have two cups of egg whites, low-fat cheese on them for breakfast, maybe bacon inside of them. Usually I have a couple ounces of beef jerky, which is actually quite a lot. I have four to six rice cakes, quarter pound of ground turkey for lunch, two cups of popcorn, protein bar, little snacks here and there. Maybe po um, popcorn's one of my favorite things. Two cups of the popcorn is low-calorie popcorn. And then whatever the hell else I want to eat to fill in the rest of my day. I don't want to have everything planned out so methodically and meticulously that I can't like go eat out a little bit. This is also under a very aggressive cut. This is like eating 15 to 1600 calories a day because I wanted to lose weight and I'm currently losing a bit of weight right now. I also have, unfortunately, not a great metabolism. I've seen other people eat on 2400 calories a day and lose weight. That's why it's so important to track where you're at currently to understand how much you need to like knock off your daily calorie intake. Because if not, you could just be stuffing your face with a bunch of stuff and gaining weight and not understanding why. Or you could be eating severely less than you should be and kind of ruining your metabolism. So all starts with tracking. My workout routine, really not crazy. I don't do some sort of crazy Instagram workout, whatever. I just hit like the main body parts a few days a week. I work out a little over the top, I'd say. I go to work out six days a week. That's just because I like it. Um, I really enjoy it. It gives me the best ideas. I've also realized it's really part of my content creation process. So if I don't work out, I have it in my head that I'm like really missing, I'm losing out on the content creation. Anyway, here's the workout routine you can steal. This is really for dudes, but if you're a woman, you can totally do this as well and just adjust the intensity and maybe the number of repetitions that you do. So for chest and triceps, I do five sets of incline push-ups till failure, till I can't do anymore. Then I take about a minute rest in between. 
Then I do three sets of dips until failure. Again, about a minute rest in between. This one's gonna trip you out. 300 push-ups. You can break them up however you want. I do 30 second rests between sets of 20. So I do 20, 30 second rest, 20, 30 second rest. I do that 15 times, hit that 300 number. When my trainer first told me to do that, I thought, dude, you're insane. There's no way I can do that. I've been doing it and trust me, it will, you'll see some results and you'll be sore. If you can't get that higher, if you have to go on your knees, do whatever you got to do. The whole point is going to failure. Failure is when your muscle growth will really take effect. And then lastly, a five sets of diamond push-ups until failure. Usually I'm only banging out like five to 10 on these ones, a minute rest. Legs. I know you dudes out there aren't doing legs. I see you in the gym, you don't do your legs. What, what's up with that? Do legs for sure. 25 squats, four sets, 30 second rest in between, 100 all together just to warm up. Seven sets of, of seven jump squats. So you have a 30 second rest in between each set. It's when you jump up, you go down, you crouch down. Seven of those. That's going to really get your heart rate going. Then you do four rounds of this one, 25 squats, 30 second wall hold where you sit against the wall, then 10 lunges on each leg. You do that for a like round of four. You do that four times. Then you do 25 squats for four sets, a one minute rest period in between each set. That is for legs. By the way, this is all like without a gym. So if you're one of those people who's like, oh, I don't have a gym. I don't want to pay for gym. I did all this. I got in the best shape of my life walking to a park during the pandemic and doing this exact workout routine. Finally, for your back, biceps, and shoulders, five sets of wide grip pull-ups until failure. A lot of people need assistance to do that, and that's okay. You know, do your best with this one. This one may require a gym. I would just go to the park, go on the kids' monkey bars, and just start banging out pull-ups. It's kind of awkward if there's kids there, so I'd have to go like really early in the morning or later in the evening, or bring my kids, <laughs> so that way I didn't look like some weirdo, creepy dude just hanging out at the park, just banging out pull-ups and whatever. Five close, five sets of close grip pull-ups till failure. Four sets of lateral raises until failure. These will require a set of dumbbells. So yeah, you might have to go buy these at the store. If you can't, if you're just cheap and don't want to do it, just don't. Just skip that one. Three sets of front raises until failure. That's where you're putting the weight in front of you. You're just lifting your arm up in front of you. And it's important to go till failure. People typically will do like, I'm going to do a set of 10 or 5 or some arbitrary number. Like, no, no, no. Go until you cannot go anymore, until you're feeling a lot of resistance because that is where muscle growth happens. Five sets of alternating curls until failure again. Three sets of hammer curls until failure again. And if you're looking at this and thinking, oh man, that's that's a lot. Don't worry. The goal is to just get started and do what you can. I've experienced the most weight loss from just walking, actually, counterintuitively. I used to run all the time, and I actually lost more weight walking than running. And you may be wondering, how does that work out? Doesn't running more Isn't running more effective? And yes, it is. But the problem with running, for me at least, is that I would fool myself into thinking, oh, I've worked out so much that I'm going to kind of chill out for the day. And that would mess up my total daily energy expenditure because that way I'm not, I'm not working out in between doing those little things like walking up, going to the refrigerator or going to play with my kids outside or, you know, do gardening or whatever it is. I mean, all these things count towards your energy expenditure. So walking to me was nice. It clears my head. I also don't use earphones or headphones. I don't, I don't listen to music when I'm walking around or working out. I've heard people say, that's ah, crazy. That would be really unenjoyable. I also work from home and it's kind of how I have like my social time. I don't drink as you probably can guess. <laughs> I'm sober. So I go to the gym and like I, I meet other dudes there and we hang out and kind of banter and it's nice to get away from my, my desk. Also, I think of the best ideas there. It lets my mind go free. We all have this monkey that's chattering in our mind constantly and going to the gym is one of the few places where I can kind of really get deep in my thoughts. And I also record myself every time I have a good thought. I'm like, oh, like this podcast, for example. I was like, I should do a, a talk about this thing. I think people will like this. And I always get really good ideas. Or, oh, well, that bug that I thought about at work that I couldn't figure out. I got the, I got the answer now. I'll record it because I know I'll forget it later. So do what you can do. Start. Try this out. Try out this routine. Always happy to dive more into this if you want. You can find me at parsity.io. Schedule a call with me. Even if you're not going to go in the coding program, I'm not selling any fitness program. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe one day. The trick is just to get started. Reach out with any questions. Make it doable. Keep going. I guarantee you're going to see some great results if you do this. Hope that's helpful. See you around. 
That's going to do it for today's episode of the Develop Yourself podcast. To learn more about becoming a software engineer with us, then check out parsity.io, P-A-R-S-I-T-Y.io. If you're not quite ready for that and you're still learning JavaScript, then jump into our Dev30 program, dev30.xyz, 30 days of working on your mindset, habits, and of course, JavaScript skills. We'll see you next week.